And, um, and the second thing I have to say is for uh, just leaders more in general, and there's a lot of leaders here, there's all kinds of, there's class leaders, there's focus family leaders, there's small group leaders, there's, you know, the officers, there's, you know, staff that watches over the leaders, the leaders of leaders, and there's all kinds of leaders here, but Paul tells Timothy, you know, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, but for your ministry. So it's like, Timothy could be like, Paul, I have so many things to do. I gotta do home visitation, I gotta take care of the widows, I gotta, you know, watch over the elders. And Paul tells them, you also gotta do evangelism. Right? So, I mean, it's not just a something that we give to other people, right? It's something everyone has to do, whether you are just a regular member or you're a pastor, right? So we need to um, realize that evangelism is a command. Right? So that's the first thing. Right? The second thing is uh, evangelism is vital to church growth. And uh, Ephesians 4 um, is, talks about how just um, Jesus, and you know, the whole book of Ephesians just paints an awesome picture of how he raised and he was ascended to heaven and we were raised with him, right? <laughs> And even as he's raised to heaven, uh, when he was raised to heaven, he gave out some gifts, right? And gifts are people. And it says in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the sh shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. And um, just, um, I'll stop there for a second, but he gave four pe types of people here, right? And you know, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, kind of like slash teachers. Um, some people say they're like two separate things. Some people say it's like one person doing both of them. But at least four types of people here, right? And you may not share my belief, but I believe apostles and prophets were foundational to the church according to Ephesians 2.20. So I think that um, we shouldn't be really looking for them. Um, because they're not around anymore, or even if they're around, um, it, they're not really um, recognized as, as such. But so it really comes down to are we evangelists or shepherds or teachers, right? And you gotta ask yourself, right? Is EE or Way of the Master or the Thursday Evangelism Group something that, oh, it's just for special people in KCM? It's for people who are like, I don't know, who has passion, who knows more about the Bible, or who, you know, who been in the walk for a long time, right? No, all of us fall into one of these categories. And like I said, I think apostles are gone, I think the prophets are gone, so you gotta ask yourself, am I pastoring somebody? And am I evangelizing somebody? Right? And we just said, Paul told Timothy, who's a pastor, to evangelize, so there's no escape from evangelism. Right? You have to do it. You, and we, can't, we cannot just put evangelism on a side and put it into like a separate sub-ministry of KCM. It needs to be something that all of us do as believers. Right? And I'm not trying to intimidate you or anything, but we got to do this. And because we fall into one of these four categories. Right? To, and the reason for doing this and to equip the saints for work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried out by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful um, schemes. So when we practice our gifts, right? When we practice our gifts as evangelists and shepherds and teachers, um, I think unity, knowledge, and maturity is built up, right? We always talk about unity. How can we be united? How can we grow in knowledge? Evangelize and be a pastor, right? Those two things. I think, um, personally, when there's evangelism, you know, outside the church and you know, within the church as well, it keeps us grounded in the foundation, like real strong foundation. And then when you have pastors on top of that, you, you get even more mature growth, maybe the tougher things in the Bible, right? But all of us should know what the gospel is, and all of us should be proclaiming it, right? So, unity, knowledge, maturity are the goals, right? And individual responsibility 
is vital. It says there, um, just when each part in verse 16, when each part is working properly, so all of us needs to be doing this, right? And, you know, just doing, um, just evangelism and pastoring. And love is the proper context, of course. Rather speaking truth than love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint which it, it is equipped. When each part is working properly, it makes the body grow so that it builds up self in love. So I'm not saying that we just do it out of obligation. We need to love God and we need to love each other and we need to uh, share the gospel and, so, and make evangelism part of KCM and part of our church. Right? And, you know, just we got to be able to say that if we don't evangelize, right, our church is not going to grow. Right? We think if we have the right equipment, if we have the nice band, right, if we have a dynamic speaker, right, if we have a nice convenient location or, you know, just nice building, then people will come. No, no, we need, we need more uh, just uh, girls so that we can attract more guys in our church. Or we need more you know, good-looking guys so that we can attract more girls in our church. No, that's not how the church should grow, right? It needs to be the evangelist. I feel like, I feel like the um, evangelists are like the gatekeepers and they need to get people in, right? So, I really encourage um, that among your church, if, you're, if you feel like your church is kind of lacking in that area, you know, don't worry, you don't need permission from, you know, to, from people to share the gospel, right? And if you do, then we have a problem. But I don't think your pastor will stop you from, uh, you know, sharing the gospel with your neighbors or your, with your friends and even with each other. So start doing it, right? Not everyone here is called to be a pastor, but I believe everyone here is called to share the gospel and evangelize. Right? So... You may be like, oh, Sanjay, I still don't know, man. I'm, I'm still kind of young. I just began my faith. I can't talk. Um, you know, I haven't been to church for a long time. Well, the thing is, evangelism can start early. Um, if you guys know, you know, Acts. In Acts 9, that's when Saul, right, now, who becomes Paul, is converted on, on his way to Damascus. He, um, you know, he gets blinded by the light, and he fought, You know, he he gets healed by another brother in Christ, and then um, you might think, if I was so, you know, okay, well, I just received Christ. Um, let me grow in my faith. Let me attend some Bible classes, and let me grow in my faith before I share the gospel. But look what it says in Acts nine twenty. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, "He is the Son of God." And all who heard him were amazed and said, "Is not this man the man? Oh, I'm sorry. Is this not the man who made havoc in Jerusalem? Those who called upon the, this name, and has he not come here for this purpose to bring them bound before the chief priest? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. So the rumor hasn't even been around yet that Paul, I mean, Saul became a Christian." Right? They still think Saul's coming. Yeah, and, and Saul's coming to lock up the you know, Christians, but he, when he arrives, he's proclaiming in the synagogues, right? And so they're confused. Wait, this is the guy that's supposed to come and arrest Christians, right? So Saul gets saved in nine, chapter nine, starts evangelizing in chapter nine. Right? So you've only been saved what, a couple of days, maybe a week or two, right? Well, the Bible says you can share the gospel, right? As long as you're clear about it, right? And you understand it. Go ahead and do it. I don't think the officers will stop you from sharing the gospel, right? So, we need to do that.